we don't put our treasure in this world. We dive, you have to divest. My, my well-being is not going to be dependent on what happens in this life. How much more will he clothe you, oh you of little faith? And do not set your heart on what you're going to eat and drink. Don't worry about it. All right. First, he's saying, you know, he, he's not saying don't ever think about what you're going to eat or drink. But what he does say is don't set your heart on it. Don't let your life be caught up in worrying about what the next thing is, your survival. You are not here on this planet to survive. You're here as a messenger of God to do the will of God. That's a whole different way of living. Do not worry, he says. That is a command as much as, as much as Thou shalt not commit adultery is a command. He's commanding you, do not worry. If you worry, you're breaking the command. And we, un we understand what we deal with. He knows our frame. He knows what we deal with. It's amazing. Here it is, thousands of years later, this applies to us just as much now as it applied 2,000 years ago. Verse 30. For the pagan world runs after such things, and your father knows you need them. So first he's talking about what not to seek. Stop seeking these. Stop running after. Stop worrying and dwelling on all these things. Because it lives, it, it, you end up with anxiety. You end up not serving God. He says, do not seek this. And then he moves now. This is what I want you to seek. Don't seek this so you can seek that. And then he says it. He says this. Verse 31. But seek his kingdom. And these things will be added to you as well. Goes together. You cannot seek God if you're seeking everything else. Amen. And if you're seeking God, you're not going to seek everything else. Right. Matthew renders it this way. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you as well. Seek first. First. The Greek word here is the word Easy word, proton. Try it. Proton means first in not just one way, but several ways. First in importance, first in place, first in time, and first in order. Seek first God in importance, meaning the most important thing I'm, I'm going to seek, the most important seeking I'm ever going to do is God. It's more important than anything else I might seek is that I'm seeking God. More than seeking money, more than seeking marriage, more than seeking, I'm seeking God. Yeah. Seek first. The main thing, the rest is secondary. Everything else is secondary. You know, there's a saying where they say, number one, first rule, don't sweat the small stuff. Right. Number two, everything is small stuff. Right. Well, I would change that. Everything but God is small stuff. But the thing is this, if you're treating everything as if it's the end of the world, as if it's the most important thing, you're not treating God as the most important thing. Amen. If you're worried about everything and all, what, what, you know, you think it's, it's, it's a sin because you're saying that's more important to, to me than God is. If God is the most important thing, this is secondary. It's going to find its place. I, I'm going to be okay. Yeah. Everything. Proton means also first in time. That in other words, before you seek anything else, seek God first. You're about to do something. You're about to embark on a, on a decision or an enterprise or a, or a journey. Did you seek God first? First seek God. First seek God. And God, is this you? Is this right? Then I do it. Before you make that decision, did you seek God? Seek God, then go. Because if you have it from God, it's going to work out. Yeah. Seek God first. Even in your day. What does it say? Early will I, early shall I seek thee. Amen. And then when you wake up, seek God. Because you know why? Because what you do at the beginning of the day is going to set the course. It's going to set the stage, set the tone of the rest of the day. So when you get up, the morning, seek God. Spend time with God so that the rest of your day will flow from that. I'm putting God, to put God first means all those things. I'm putting him first in time, first in place, first in importance, first in order. If he's first, Everything's going to flow. If he's not first, nothing's going to flow. If you seek the world, you're seeking all these, you're putting all your time and energy into all these things, you're, it's going to choke out the love of God. If you take the, the motive that all the other things we seek, think about all the things that we seek, all the things that we spend time on, 
And some things have their place, but it might be, you might be seeking for money. You might be seeking for an education. You might be seeking, and you're spending time and energy and all that. How about taking that energy and that time and giving it to God? Putting it to seeking God. Because imagine if you, all the things you seek, you might seek entertainment. You spend hours doing other things. Imagine if you took that and directed it to God and seeking God. Do you know how much you would grow spiritually? Your thoughts, seeking, planning, strategy, energy. Bring it to God. Labor, action. Convert it to God and boy, what God will do with your life. Amen. There are those who preach, if you follow God, He's going he's gonna to bless you materially. You follow God, He's going to give you a bigger house, bigger car, bigger this. Now, God does bless. God does honor. God does provide. And the, the, the idea of believing for, for God in faith for your life, that's a good thing. But this is not a good thing because the Bible speaks against it. Paul writes to Timothy, some people preach that God, that godliness is a way to get gain, money. If you're doing that, if you're, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm following the principles, I'm following the thing to get this, then you're not following God. You're following money. You're following prosperity. Amen. That means prosperity is your God, not God. God is not a means to any end. God is the end. You don't follow money. You use money for God. Paul says, but you man of God, don't be like this. You man of God, he says, flee from all this. Get away from the, the love of money. Flee from it. The word in Greek is fugo. Try it. Fugo. Sounds like it. Sound, fugo. Sounds like it. It means run, run away. Vanish, it means escape, escape it. The idol, escape the idol. And that, not just for that, anything you might be following, any sin, escape it. Follow it, few go. Because the best way to deal with sin is not to deal with it, it's to get away from it. Right. Temptation, get away from it, it'll get weaker. It's like gravity, it'll get weaker when you get away from it. But you, man of God, Timothy, flee from these things, Stop. don't seek these things, but, same thing, now, don't seek that, but pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Seek first the kingdom of God. It says, do, don't seek. In order to do it, I have to not, I have to stop seeking this so I can, tent, I can seek God now. And the word in Greek here for seek is tseteo, which means not only to seek, it means to worship. To worship. To worship you must seek. To seek God is to worship. And to worship is to seek. It also means desire. In other words, as I'm not just I'm not just worshiping, I'm desiring God. Amen. That you know, desire you say, well, I don't I don't know if I have that desire. You make it your desire. You choose your desire. You know that? You've got the power to choose I'm gonna desire this and I'm not gonna desire that. You have the power. Because otherwise, otherwise the Bible wouldn't say it. You have the power to make it, oh Lord, you have to value it, you have to treasure it, Lord, the greatest thing that I, that I can know you, that I can be in your presence, that I can have more of you, I can have your anointing, I can have your spirit, desire it, treasure it, you'll desire it. Amen. Pursue these things, go after them. Now if you have money, I don't know if some of you are investors, but if you have money and you're investing in a stock that keeps failing, you're going you're gonna to take your money out of it, if you're wise. So there's, inve there's investing and then there's divesting. I take my money out, I'm divesting so I can put, I can invest it in something else. So one of the things in God is in order to invest in the kingdom, you have to divest from the world. Yeah. The kingdom of this world, let me put it this way. The stock of this life is only going down. It's not giving good returns. As you get older, less returns. You look in the mirror, less returns. It's not a wise investment. I mean, you can cover it up, you can put paint on it, do what you want, but it's still the house is going down. So therefore, if you have a stock that's doing badly, you take your money out. You take, your, you take what you've invested. You divest from the world because it's a sinking ship. So you divest. That doesn't mean you, you bless, you live. You, we, we use all things, but we don't put our treasure in this world. We divest. You have to divest. My, my well-being is not going to be dependent on what happens in this life. My well-being, I am in, I am divesting my emotions. I'm divesting. You know, some of you are dealing with all sorts of emotional things because you have invested. Your, your emotions are vested in all sorts of things that 
the people and things that were done to you. You have to divest from that. That's not your home. It's not your well-being. It's not your treasure. And invest in the kingdom of God. Put your treasure, store up your treasures, invest in the kingdom of God. And nothing can touch it. Your peace won't be touched. It's a good stock. In fact, it returns forever. In this life and forever. Only thing that doesn't pass away is Him. I want to put my stock in that. You might say, like, I want zeal for God. I want to have that passion. You know, I don't have it. No, no, you do. You do. You might say, well, I want, I want, I want to want God more. I want to, I want to, I don't have, you do have it. It just, here's the thing. You have it because you were born to have it. You were created to have it, every one of us. We are created to long for God, to seek God. We have a, a God-shaped emptiness. We long, there's a natural longing for God. You couldn't worship if it wasn't part of who you were made to be. Yeah. But what it means is you're investing in something else. It means you are, there's something else that is taking up that zeal. It may be a person, maybe a pursuit, maybe a possession, maybe a plan, maybe yourself, maybe a house, maybe a career, maybe anything draining what God gave you. That's why all the pagan world, they all got into idols. Why? Because they took what God had, the, 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 the passion for God that they were built for, the longing for God, and they put it into other things. They became idols. We don't call them idols now, but same thing. You see, I call it the Doritos principle. It's a very deep thing from the original Greek. Doritos. Doritos. And that is if you're eating Doritos, you know, like I sometimes could do, I, I, I'm not hungry for anything else. You know, I'm not hungry. But, you know, and I'm not hungry for the good food. If you fill yourself up with junk food, you're not hungry for anything else. But if you stop eating that, your hunger is going to come back. And, and your hunger is going to go, to go to where? For good food. So with God, spiritually, if you're eating spiritual junk food, you're putting your, your, your heart is attached to all these things. It's taken away your natural, your hunger for God. But if you put it away and spend time seeking God until it, it'll come. It may take a little bit, but it's going to come. Your love for God, your excitement for God, your zeal for God, your hunger for God, it's going to come back. Identify your spiritual Doritos. What is quenching? Because there's something, there is something quenching. If you're, you know, you go to some place, we go to missions, we go to, go to a place where they don't have all the cell phones, they don't have iPads, iPods, you know, internet, all the, and you know what they're spending their time with? with? With God, with the Bible. There's revival that you see there that you don't see here. Because these other things are taking it up. I'm not saying you can't be on it. I'm not saying God can't use it. He, he does. I do research. That's not the point. The point is your heart. And your life and your time. It's got to be first him. First. First. You ever see stock traders on that floor? Like, you know, buy, sell. They, you know, they go crazy. And it's all like chaos. They're desperate. Like desperate. This going, this going. Get this, get this. It's going up and down, up and down. But you know, it's interesting because when you, when, as far as righteousness and the things of God, nobody's doing that. Nobody's going quickly. We want this. Get this. Get. Nobody's doing that. As if, we're, as if, you know, it, and here's the real treasure. The real treasure are the things of God and we're not treating it. We're treating stuff that's like garbage compared to it. Like, like that's the treasure. We got to get this. Got to get it. Yeah. Imagine if you were in a department store and you didn't have money. Like, oh, I wish I could have. All of a sudden someone says, okay, everything's free. <laughs> well, in God, it's better than that. Yeah. The greatest things are free. I don't care if you had a billion, you know, there are a few people in the world who have a billion dollars. They have nothing compared to what you have. Yeah. Nothing. They are not nearly as rich. And look at them. Most of them are not really necessarily happy people. So much greater what you have. It says pursue that. Pursue that. Put all that you might put to the world now, put it to God. The way Wall Street goes after money, put it to God. You put it to God. You know, the Lord said the children of this world are not, are not you know, the children of this world are wiser in their ways, in the ways of the world, than, than the children of the kingdom are with the things of the kingdom. Amen. In other words, they're aggressive. They're, they go crazy. They want money. They'll do a million things, a million strategies. But we are not doing the same thing with the things of God. We should be just as zealous and strategic and, and all out for the things of God.
Hi, I'm Jonathan Kahn, and I hope you were blessed with the video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. Feel free to share your reactions with your comments and how you were blessed, and share this video with your friends. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.